everyone, and welcome to the Shimmy Mob Spotlight Series. Today, as our guest, I have Safia Nawar, all the way from Lexington, Kentucky. Hello, Safia. Hello. Thank you for talking with me. I really appreciate this. Well, I'm really glad that you applied because I, I saw your application and I saw the extensive background you have. So I'm really interested yeah. to find out more about you and I'm sure the people are watching this as well. So can you, can you share with us, um, because I see that you're very passionate about belly dance. How did you mm -hmm. start? What sparked, what got you into belly dance? Oh, it's a really funny story, actually. Um, I've really loved belly dance forever. And I did ballet and jazz and tap, and I did theatrical dance. I did all sorts of dancing throughout my entire childhood, my teen years. I got married. I had kids. And one day, my mother-in-law came to me, and she said, there's this, this adult exercise class at the Adult Technical Education Center down in Ocala, Florida. And her next door neighbor who was in her 60s invited her to go to it. And she said, you know, would you like to come and be a chance for us to go do something together? So I thought mother-in-law, daughter bonding would be great. Mm -hmm. I brought my 10 year old daughter with me and it was a belly dance class. They were teaching and they were specifically, they were teaching rock sharky mm -hmm. and they were very, very particular about, you know, having very traditional stuff and everything. It was these two older ladies and I just, fell in love with it, absolutely fell in love with it. From the moment they started playing the music and moving, I just was was moved to never want to stop ever again. No, it's so, so that's funny. what really got me. It, it's so funny because I asked this question to everyone and that's pretty much the common common answer is like once they started they were hooked. It's just yeah, yeah. you know it just takes over you. It's I think it's just a natural thing. Uh, for women, especially, to just want to belly dance. I think it's just such a natural flow. And like you said, these were not women who were super young. They, they had, you know, there were seasoned women who were just starting out. Yeah. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. Breaks, takes away that myth, was, right? It was, it was, it was, it was just amazing. And, and after taking the class, I felt so good physically, emotionally, um, it felt good to move my body and it just was wonderful. And there was a, a lot of bonding too, between all the women laughing at how we would mess up and do things funny. And we didn't quite look like the teacher was doing it. We still just, we loved it. Mm -hmm. So it was so a great experience. Once you started getting into more lessons and learning more and more, Obviously, mm -hmm. your passion evolved from not just learning the dance, but into performing and into teaching. What came first, performing or teaching? The performing, for sure. I was, um, I, I still to this day, and I've been doing this for 17 years now, I still question everything I do and say. Mm -hmm. I still wonder, am I doing this the right way? I mean, I'm, I'm very particular about everything I do. So um, the performing, I mean, Within a few months of taking lessons, I was doing student performances. And, and I had, like I said, I had a lot of dance experience prior, so that wasn't too hard for me to get up there on stage. But mm -hmm. to get in front of a room full of women and say, this is how you have to do it, was a lot more daunting to me. Mm -hmm. And I actually had to get kind of pushed out in order to do it. it was, I was dancing for over seven years before I started teaching. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's more time than a lot of people who start teaching. Some people start teaching a lot sooner yeah. than that. So you were quite well experienced in the dance before you started teaching it. And now- I was, I was. And now you have a studio. Yes, yes, I have my own studio. Um, and even that took a while for me to really <laughs> push myself to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm really overly cautious about stuff, you know? And so I've had the studio for about four years now. So I was teaching for six years before I stepped in and actually found a place and signed a lease. And, and that was also kind of a push. I was renting spaces in different places in town and they would have problems like um, one of the places, the mirror fell off of the wall Oops. and <laughs> it, yeah, it, thank goodness it wasn't while class was going on, but we, we went to the studio and, and there was broken glass everywhere. It was down in the basement, so nobody had known about it yet. Um, it just, I guess the glue dry rotted. Mm -hmm. And it took them 
three, four weeks before the place was suitable for us to dance in again. Wow. It took forever. And, and it, it made me realize that, that I didn't want to be dependent on other people and their schedules and everything. I wanted to be able to make my own schedule and teach classes when I wanted to teach classes, not when time was available somewhere mm -hmm. else. And I had built up a lot of clients at that point. So I thought I was ready to take that step. Mm -hmm. And it was a big step. For oh, sure. oh, it certainly is because now you're going to be <laughs> locked into a lease, right? It's not like you can just cancel yes. your whatever monthly booking. Now you have a full commitment. Whether was it was it a year lease the first time? Your well, no, we actually signed a five year lease. Five year lease. Okay. Um, so four years into it now, we have one more year to go, and we have in the contract that we have first dibs on the place when the contract comes due again. So he can't mm -hmm. lease it out to anybody else without us asking first mm -hmm. and we can get another five years of the contract. So we, we tried to make sure about that. We were fortunate that my husband works for a guy who, who is a great businessman and he gave us a lot of advice when we were first starting out. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we probably would have a lot more mistakes. Oh, well, it's nice to, to have that support and, to know people that can help. Yes. That avoid yeah. some of those You need mistakes. a good network. Yeah. But you also uh -huh. mentioned, uh, and I already knew this from before, but um, you had mentioned before we started this recording that your husband is very supportive and very involved in your business. So yes. what role does yes. he play in your business? If you don't mind me asking, because I, I think it's important that people watching this who may have a partner, uh, maybe if the partner is not sure how to support their spouse who is in uh -huh. this industry, maybe by watching this, they can see how it works. I know you guys have been like, he's been supportive of you the whole time, the whole, all the way through. So yes, from the very beginning. Yeah. Um, so what, what's his role? Well, it, starts out, <laughs> it started out with, he was just doing photography and videos for us when we were doing shows and things. Before I was even teaching, he would go to the shows and he'd take pictures and, and he'd do videos. Um, and when I started teaching, he, he had a lot of experience doing um, flyers and things like that. So, so he helped to, to make my posters and my flyers. So he does a lot of the computer stuff that I, I think I would be lost without him. I would have to definitely hire someone to do it. Mm -hmm. So it helps that, that he can get on the computer he, he does a lot of my website maintenance. We have someone that does the website, but um, my husband will go in and add things or he'll contact the guy and go, hey, the pictures are getting old. We need to put new pictures in or um, this particular calendar is not working anymore and they work together. So he, did, he does a lot of that for me. A lot of the technical mm -hmm. stuff is taken care of. So I can do the artistic stuff and I do my, my class schedules and plan my, my classes and, and plan what workshops I want to teach and things like that. And then he comes in and, and he does like all of the, the advertising stuff for me. That's nice. And he still does all the videography and pictures. <laughs> well, he, yeah. He's more in the visual aspect of besides the, the technical side of supporting you with the website. He also um, seems to support you in the marketing material, like the print material, the videography yes. and all that. So it's the visual side of uh, yes. business, right? So that's, right. Um, that's, that's actually something that I find a lot of people that have uh, dance studios that are afraid to delegate and to mm -hmm. other people. And I, I think yeah. your example, you know, the fact that he's doing this uh, for you, like you said, it gives you more time to dedicate yourself to the artistic side. And even though you yes. are still planning your schedules and all, you know, your, your class plans and all that, uh, just having that peace of mind, letting someone else take care of things that you're not possibly the greatest at so that you can focus on the things that you're great yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. And he, he doesn't do it on his own, though. I mean, he, he's, he asks me, what pictures do you want? What do you want it to stay? You know, he definitely well, he asks me for a lot of the information. But uh, so he doesn't do it all on his own. He de we work as a team on it, mm -hmm. you know, but I wouldn't be able to have it done without him. For yeah. sure. Well, it's important that he actually does ask you because technically you are the, the you are the <laughs> person who presents, you're the performer, you're the teacher. So 
uh, it's good because yeah. you want something out there that doesn't really match what you're thinking, right? So, yeah, like you said, right, it's, right. It's great to have a team. So, uh, Sophia, uh, tell us what styles of dance do you teach? I know you know a lot of the styles because I know you've studied uh -huh. the styles. But at the studio, right. what, what what are the styles that you teach? I mostly teach um, Egyptian rock sharky. I teach Lebanese style oriental. I teach Turkish oriental. Um, we do a lot of different uh, fusion things. We, we do like an ITS fusion. Um, some of the girls like to get really dark and funky. So we do some stuff like that every once in a while, but that's not my real forte. <laughs> um, but most of it's traditional stuff. And uh, Rada style, um, uh, folkloric dances, you know, Malaya and cane dance and um, Hagala and things like that. Yeah. That's cool. So there's, there's lots that's, of choices and options. <laughs> lots of options that you're seeing yeah, yeah. in different styles. That's cool. So Absolutely. I know that you're not just uh, a dance instructor in Lexington and not just dance studio owner. But you also travel mm -hmm. and you teach yes. uh, workshops outside of the area, so people actually hire you, or you go to festivals and uh, and, and teach. So can you can you tell us and mm -hmm. share with everyone watching what's coming up on your schedule and where they can catch you? Because I know you got things coming up. Yeah, well, I think the biggest stuff I have coming up right now is uh, in September and October. September, I'm doing Gypsy Mystique, which is near the Columbus, Ohio area, and that's September 9th. And that's a one-day workshop with a big hofla in the evening, and the workshop is, is shared with three different teachers. So I'm just teaching for a couple hours that day. Um, and then beginning of October. I'm so excited. I am going to Cairo, Egypt to oh. teach at Camp Nagum. Yeah, and that one is, it's a, it's a five-day camp, all-inclusive. It's October 1st to October 5th, and the one fee pays for the hotel and two meals a day, all of the classes and all of the shows, and it's all live music. So that's really neat. And then also in October, I'm trying to think here, October 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, I'm going to be in Orlando, Florida at Festival on the Nile, which is, this is their 40th anniversary at Festival wow. on the Nile. So yeah, and they have a show on Friday night. They have classes all day on Saturday and Sunday, and they have a show with a live band on Saturday night. So I'm teaching the classes all day Saturday and Sunday and performing with the live band. And I'll be there Friday to root the belly dancers on the Friday night show. So those are like the big things coming up for me where I'm traveling, which I'm super excited about it. Festival on the Nile's really neat because it was one of the very first workshops I went to when I was a baby dancer. Oh. So I'm going back now as a teacher. Oh, so yeah. that has a lot of really meaning. Neat. It does. I'm actually getting goosebumps talking about it. <laughs> it's it's really exciting. It's kind of almost like a full. And the first live band I danced. What's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's the first live band that I danced with. Oh wow! It was there at Festival on the Nile. Nice. Yeah. So and live music is so wonderful. So, yeah, that's the big things. Yeah, it's it's. Uh... I am sure while you're, you're getting goosebumps now, I think it's going to be quite impactful when you're there as a teacher, when you go, it's going to feel almost I think so. like you. Yeah, so, Sophia, yeah you've, absolutely. You, you, you've been a team leader for Shimmy Mob um, a few times. Can you share yes, with yes. Your other instructors who may be thinking, oh, I don't think I get student, like I don't see the benefit to me if I mm -hmm. am a team leader. Can you, can you share how uh, being a team leader has benefited you? Sure. Um, well, this is actually my fifth year as a team leader and I danced the first year as well. So I've done it for six years now. Mm -hmm. But um, what I find is, is as long as you get out there and you try to contact the community, um, I send letters out to other dance studios. 
Uh, we post stuff in the newspaper. I get on the local news. I do social media. Mm-hmm. And I, I, a lot of my students come in, my dance troupe, every year my entire dance troupe <laughs> registers, so I automatically have six dancers that way. But um, I meet lots of new people. I, there's people that um, were dancers previously that had stopped dancing and didn't know I was here that now get involved in, and come to the Shimmy Mob and come to my shows and things since they found out about me mm-hmm. um, through Shimmy Mob. I have people that have never belly danced before that did hip hop or did country western line dancing or they were cheerleaders in high school and they find out about it um, and they sign up and they, they take that first step trying to learn the Shimmy Mob choreography and and they have a ton of fun and the next thing you know they're coming to classes so i have not gained like a ton of new students from it but i definitely have gotten more of an outreach in the community here more people know who we are and i do have more students and they bring in friends and things too so it definitely has it's helped for sure it's a lot of work of course but, it is. <laughs> but we have a lot of fun doing it we have a lot of fun doing it too so i can't complain about the work because we enjoy it that's great that's great. So, Sophia, if people want to know more about you and uh, about your studio and your schedule mm-hmm. and your history and all that, where do they find you? I have two websites. I have one for myself personally as a dancer because I was performing before I was teaching. And that is dancesophia.com. So it's the word dance. And then my name is S A F I Y A. Dot com, And then we have the one for the, the dance studio, and it's Arabesque World Dance is the name of the studio, but our website is arabesquelex.com. So arabesque is like the, um, the ballet move, arabesque, A-R-A-B-E-S-Q-U-E, and then L-E-X for Lexington. So those are great websites, uh, tons of information. And of course, I'm on social media. You know, you have to be on social media, right? On social so I have media Facebook, days. I have I have Instagram, um, um, YouTube, you know. Well, we're going to put the link to your website. At at the end of this video, there will be a link to your website. So if people didn't catch the spelling, because I'm like the worst. I can hear the spelling, but I write everything opposite of what I hear. So, well, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Everyone watching, make sure you go to the, just follow the link and, um, Follow Sophia and make sure you catch her if she's in your area or just fly in to see her maybe one of these big festivals or yeah. in, in Lexington. Yeah, we have, we host shows here too. I mean, like um, June, the first weekend in June, we have Ahmed Hussein coming in, who's the Egyptian Oriental dance instructor. And, and he's like the master instructor of Egyptian Oriental dance because he's like highly trained in ballet and ballroom and everything as well as, as being connected to the Rada troupe in Egypt and, and training with the Egyptian ballet and everything. So we host every June, we have like a big workshop here that, that we bring in like world-class instructors. So, nice. and Lexington's a great city to visit. It's a really beautiful city. So I'll have to come lots of <laughs> Yeah, you need to come shimmy mob with us. Well, you never know. Where I'm gonna, you never know where I'm going to be. <laughs> so you never know, right? Uh, I like uh-huh. to. Go, I, I say I like to clone myself because I would love to be able to dance with everyone on that. You know, on the day. Yeah. I love to be with every team. We can't have like 150 of you. <laughs> no, or more. <laughs> not. not yet. We haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> technology we haven't, we haven't gone there yet like but um uh, we'll just have to rely on videos and live streams for the moment until but like i said don't know where i'm gonna be every year is different this year i decided to actually stay home based but we'll see what happens next year uh-huh. i don't know it's been lovely sophia is there anything else you'd like to share with people watching this before we go or I would say anybody out there that has thought about doing this and is afraid to do it, you just need to take the leap and try it. Mm -hmm. Because even if you only have one or two people sign up to be in your team, it's still a really excellent experience. And, And it's not about the size of the team or the amount of money that you bring in, but just the effort that you're putting out there. Um, I actually have, I have a note. This is the, the nest. This is the the place that we do our shimmy mob for every year. And they sent me a note and, and it just says, uh, 
To Sophia and the team of Arabesque, thank you so much for your work for Crisis Care. You rock. The dedication to your art is the same dedication you bring in helping the nest. We appreciate it so much. And, and we've been working with them for like four years now. Mm -hmm. And it feels so good to mm -hmm. do good. So, yeah. you know, if you're not sure about it, just try it. Yeah. That's what I tell people for sure. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for all that you do for Shimmy Mob and for what you do for your community, for your students, for traveling, sharing your knowledge and expertise and your passion. And I am sure people will come check you out. I wish you the best for your Cairo trip. And thank all you. your trip by Cairo sounds super extra exciting just because of it's the amazing yeah, <laughs> yeah. so wishing you the best hopefully i will see you in person sometime in the near future and until next time thanks again for being a guest in the series and uh, we'll see you soon all right thank yeah. you You're bye welcome. Thank you so much for watching the Shmi Mob video spotlight series. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a comment below. And if you would like to be featured in the future, send us an email at shimimob at gmail.com.